What's up traders, Tom here with another video. Sometimes the stock market reaches a critical juncture where two levels become very important for the continuation of a trend or the start of a new trend. Are we at that point now? Stay tuned. Today we'll be talking about how I like to approach technical analysis using the top down method and price action. I'll be going through a quick step by step while looking at the live markets including the S&P 500 and NASDAQ and identifying levels that interest me and why they interest me. I hope everybody finds this video educational and also helpful as well as showing you how there's critical points that you need to look at the market and sometimes eliminate the noise as best you can. I also just want to quickly remind everybody to hit that subscribe and alert button if you've been enjoying our content. Remember to give this video a like and also remember we're giving away $500 to a lucky trader or investor just for subscribing and hitting one of the links down below. We'll be giving away the prize when we hit 20,000 subscribers and it's as easy as that. We do appreciate your support. Quick market summary, we're looking at a pretty flat market coming in today. Effectively, we do not have too big a movements. Notables are the VIX is slightly up and of course crude has had decent moves over the last couple of hours. In terms of news, same old, same old really. We have investors going in hard on stocks and sending stocks out of crazy proportions. In fact, South Korea is warning of retail investors getting involved in speculative stocks and not thinking about anything to do with fundamentals or whether the stock's worth anything and instead chasing profits. This is bubblicious and it's not something that we like to see as investors over the long term. It's ideal that this does not happen on a regular occasion. In fact, we have other people like this stock market legend, which is Jeremy Grantham, who has called three financial bubbles, now saying that this is the real McCoy and crazy stuff. And if we notice down here, it looks like there is a mention of Hertz, which is something we've covered on this channel. Of course, people buying bankrupt companies in the pursuit of basically gambling to try to make profit before getting out. So it's always important to know the news that's about to come out. And of course, you need a good calendar to do so. Here is ForexFactory.com. There are plenty of different news calendars. And the importance is tonight that we have the unemployment claims here and the expectation and the forecast. So you can see on this program, it has the forecast and the previous. So the forecast is for the unemployment claims to go down to 1.3 million. Let's see if that happens. During the time of this recording, it has not come out, but we always like to click this little chart here and they have been relatively good at picking it recently. So if we have a spike in numbers, expect that to worry the S&P 500 and other stock indices and for them to go down. Again, the printing press PAL is out tomorrow and they are going to be talking about these numbers. It will be interesting to see if this number is poor what is going to happen? Because every time this number has been out of expectations, the Fed or an announcement has been simultaneously coming out with that announcement when needed. So will they get involved again? Let's see, because I tell you what, <laughs> these are getting ridiculous. Every single time anything's about to go bearish, they come out with a well-timed news result. Okay, so let's talk about technical analysis and the top-down approach. So what the top-down approach really means is you want to be as well-informed as you can be about the levels. Many traders only look at a few timeframes instead of looking at them all. Now, I've had a lot of people say, why don't you put indicators on the charts all the time? And the main reason is because indicators are a lagging indication of what's happened. So they basically are based on price action. One of the best things to do as a trader or an investor is to follow the price, follow what the charts are telling you. And to do that, we need to be informed from the monthly down. So we usually start on the monthly and then what we would do is we would draw our horizontal lines for key support and key resistance areas. So do we know that, of course, there's a huge resistance up here at 3,400? Sure. Do we know there's a huge resistance support down here at 2,200? Yes, we do. We can leave those on our charts and then we can jump into the smaller timeframes. 
We then look at a weekly and we again draw up our, our support and resistance lines. Now the most important thing about doing this is that usually you want to change these colors up so that you know the weekly and the monthly support and resistances. The other thing is I'm doing this on the SPX. So I'm doing this on the real market. We've talked a lot when you're looking at confirmations and confirmation is key to price action trading. You want to be doing it on the real index that is open during the real time that the index is meant to be opened, not during the futures. The futures can fake out a lot. And while the futures can be traded as a tool, your major confirmations need to come from this index. Very important. So we basically continue drawing our support and our resistance lines on the weekly. And now we start to look, is there any candle confirmations or anything that we're seeing here? Do we see any crosses of the moving averages? Well, we're about to see a 20 50 EMA cross, which is pretty significant on the weekly. We then go to the daily, which is my favorite time frame and probably most people's favorite time frame. And then we start to just see if we need to change up our support resistance line slightly. So we might draw our resistance slightly differently there just to make sure it's in line and draw our supports. From this level, we start to get an idea about what's happening in the market right now. So I would say that there is a clear level here at around this 3000. We know the 3000 is a key psychological zone. The market stopped just before, which it often does. It stops just before the 3000. It found support before at the 3000 and then it got through the resistance, got through the 200 SMA, came back down and found this point where resistance became support, which is role reversal. And it's a very important concept to understand and know. So from this point, we've basically said, okay, we have a point around this 2950 to 3000. We're actually going to draw two lines there. And this is very important because when I draw this 2950 to 3000, I want to be setting my alerts. So I will do a separate video, maybe even on the weekend. So make sure you subscribe to this channel to see that. And I'll be talking about TradingView, which is a free piece of software where you're going to be able to set alerts. And you set an alert basically for this 3000, and then you'll set an alert for the top end resistance at this 3200 plus. And we do that so that we know when the market's hitting. And it's very important because we might be working, we might be doing something else, but as a trader, we need to know when key levels are hit. So now that we've trapped the market, we can talk about going into the smaller timeframes. So then we want to go to the four hour. And generally the four hour is actually where I like to be from a perspective of looking at the stock markets. I like to look at the four hour because this is the one where most swing traders will be trading. And it's the one where I guess it's still high enough time frame to have big money flow showing confirmations. So the reason that I want to look at the four hours, I want to just make sure that my lines make sense and whether markets had closed below or above. So one thing that automatically comes into my eye here is on the real market, we gapped lower and quickly filled that gap during the trading session. The reason that's important is because then I'll know that for me to see a close below the 3000, remember this is a zone, we'll need a daily to close below because the four hours done it before, faked out and moved up. So it's important that we know that so that we can look for a daily close below. Now, where is the daily close probably going to be coming to in terms of if it gets back down here? Well, it's going to be hitting this 50 EMA on the daily. The 50 EMA is a very important EMA. You can see over here, it acts as dynamic support and it often acts as dynamic resistance. And if the market can get through this point, at the same time that it will be in our zone and it closes below, it's going to be a significant bearish signal. Why do we think the Fed came out at this point when the market was about to go potentially bearish and they said, hey, we're going to buy corporate bonds. They do that because they know that if this level is not supported, where is the next level for the market? Well, the next level for the market is the next key support. If we're going to be looking at the key supports, there's our next key support at 2800, between 2800 and these lows at 2730. So this is going to be the next level. Now the market, once it gravitates through this zone, will generally try to fill the gap and move towards the next direction. So what it will do 
is it'll get through this zone, give us the confirmation, it'll break down, it'll come back up and it'll probably test this EMA at the time. And then usually it comes down to the next level. It fills that gap. The importance of this is that you have usually two opportunities as a trader. One opportunity is to take the confirmation break. The other opportunity is to take the market coming back to this EMA and then taking the roll reversal off that zone effectively. Because at that point when it comes back, this point, which is the 3000, let's say, is going to act as resistance because it was once now support, which will become resistance. And this will actually be the higher probability trade. So some things that people like to do is they like to say, okay, confirmation break, I'm going to put half of my order position on short. And then when it comes back to my conservative area, I'm going to put the other half of my position on short. By doing this, you remain in the trade. So you have that good psychology of not the fear of missing out. But on top of that, you're not sad if it comes back because you know you've got more ammunition in your trade to put it in the market. The importance of setting all these levels about psychology and about having that ability to hold your trade. You know that when this happens, there is a high likelihood that it's going to go to the 2800 zone, unless of course the X factor Fed come in. And the reason you know that is because the market has broken a significant area which all of the big traders are going to be seeing. Remember the Fed comes in and backstops this position several times. The other importance of all of this and the most important thing is that this is using price action. We are going to have a peak, a trough, a lower peak if this was to occur, and then as it breaks through, it's going to be a lower trough. A lower trough signifies a change of trend on that time frame. This is a daily. So it is one of the best time frames to be looking at. And this is such a significant change of trend. Remember at the bottom of all of this, we had a trough, we had a peak, we had the higher trough. And as soon as this level broke, price action was saying that the bottom was in for that time period and that we were going to see further bullish movement. And of course we have seen that and that was off. Of course, the Fed was involved here. We know that the market was pushing by the Fed, but the price action showed us that. If you ignored all news and you didn't know anything about anything that's happening right now, and you just went, okay, I'm just going to trade what the market's telling me. Guess what? At this point, you were getting a huge buy signal. Have you been getting a bear signal yet? No, because every time the market tries to break past supports, and get below these levels, the Fed has come out and supported the market. So that's why the Fed's supporting these levels and that's why price action is so key. So hopefully everybody sees that, the 3000 key level, but you need to draw the range because we know the previous resistance. This is a very tough point for us to see the confirmation. So we'd really like a close under the 2950. From that point, there's a high probability, remember it's statistics here, that the market goes to 2800. From the bull side, and the reason I said wanted direction on the thumbnail today is because we have got key resistance here up at this 3232. If it breaks this zone, where is the next logical point for the market to go? Well, of course, if it breaks that, generally it'll do something like this, where it breaks the resistance, it confirms by closing the candle on the daily, and then it comes back, tests this level where the resistance becomes the support just like normal roll reversal, and then the market bulls in to the previous resistance. Now, if that's to occur, it's definitely a possibility. Remember, as a trader, you don't wanna have the bias either way. It's very easy to be a bear because, you know, I have bearish sentiment as well over longer term investments in some ways. Obviously I hold a position long at all times, but you know I do have money on the side ready for investment. But at the same time, this is what the market's gonna be telling us. And if you just trade what the market tells you, you'd be surprised how much better you end up getting at as a trader. Remember price action is the number one key thing for you to be looking at. You can trade a chart with nothing else on it and just price action and you'll do pretty well. But the key to the top down method is that once we've identified levels that we like, we will then break that down and bring in our indicators. 
So we'll bring in our RSI, we'll bring in our MACD, we'll bring in more moving averages if we need them, we'll bring in our stochastic, whatever other methods that we want to bring in, we'll do that at that point. So the reason I said we're at a critical juncture is because we really are. There's a case for both sides as there always is in the stock market. And sometimes there's no trade in the middle, but what there is is there's a trade on either side where you can then look at these zones and you can make decisions at that time based on bringing in your other reasons as well. Remember, never place a trade or never place an investment without having multiple reasons to do so. I ideally have three to six reasons to be in a trade that are all separate from each other. And risk management is key. If you are shorting this market, which I've stated on several occasions, the Fed likes to ruin, that if you see the change of trend, where do you think you'd be placing a stop loss? Well, you'd place it behind the last swing with a certain percentage above. And being dynamic is the key here. You wouldn't be able to just say, okay, I'm going to place my stop loss here. Because if you do that, you're just going to get stopped out when it comes back conservatively to the role reversal area. So it's all about understanding the price action. The price action will give you the stop loss levels and the take profit levels. Just quickly on the NASDAQ, I wanted to mention we're about to reach back to those previous highs, 10,140. We're sitting at just on 10,000. 10,000 should be a strong psychological zone. And the reason I want to talk about the NASDAQ is because sometimes you hit very key psychological resistance. The market hit that 10,000, just got through it by literally a percent and a bit, and then shorted it off. And that's what's going to happen often in bull runs. If you're looking for profit areas, key psychological zones in the stock market mean a lot. Thousands mean a lot on this index. If you look at previous resistance, look over here. There's no coincidence that the support was the 9,000 and that became the resistance during this crash. It even became pretty much resistance over here where the 9,000 had a sell off on it. So thousands make a big difference because there's psychological levels in the market. I'll quickly bring up my thoughts on the US dollar index because I still think it's key to risk on and risk off sentiment. We still have a key level here at 97.50 and we almost have a 2050 cross on the moving averages. But just because the moving averages are crossing doesn't mean much to us. It's all about the price action. We need to see price move above and close and confirm above this level. So hopefully that helped people today. We will be covering way more on this channel, but you can see why the stock market is at a critical juncture for both sides of the tape. Remember, knowledge is empowering, but only if you act on it. Please subscribe, hit that bell if you enjoy our videos, give the video a like to support us on the YouTube algorithm and however that works, and happy trading. See everybody.